the Team VVV Awards 2018, sponsored by Ben Green Racing and Thrustmaster. Hello, viewers. Well, now it's on to the award for Best Automotive Esport, one of our new awards this year. And of course, uh, I'm joined tonight by Martin. Hi, guys. And Kevin. Hello. Okay, chaps. Uh, so uh, obviously this year, Automotive Esport won the new awards. We've seen motor industry getting in more involved in esports. It's the buzzword at the moment. And this is an award where we've taken a slightly different approach. This is the one where I'm taking a more personal approach based on my experience of esports over the years and what everyone's actually doing. Now, you've got four nominations here. We've got Esports WRC, F1 Esports Series, MotoGP Esport Championship and McLaren's World's Fastest Game Up. Now, when we're looking at the mine, I look at both the entry point for gamers to get involved. I look at how they've been broadcast and I look at the media access behind the scenes and how that affects us directly at VVV as well. And when I look at esports, esports are nothing new. They're, they've been around for over 30 years. I keep hearing people say that esports are new, but they're not. They've been around for a long, long time. Uh, it's just that they're getting more exposure now than they were before, but they're not necessarily better organized. Let's talk about the different esports that we have, of course. We have esports WRC. Uh, that's run by the ESL. Uh, and of course, that ran last year. We have the F1 esports series, which is supported by Gfinity and the use of their wonderful studio in London. We had Dorna, who have run their MotoGP championships. And we've got McLaren's World's Fastest Gamer, which is backed up by Ideas and Cars. Ideas and Cars, of course, uh, Darren and his crew uh, were responsible for uh, GT Academy a few years ago as well. But there's also lessons to be learned from these companies. For example, take GT Academy. Uh, GT Academy was a great concept. It was about getting a, a gamer and putting them in a racing car. And when they started GT Academy, the uh, the games industry was interested, but the motor industry wasn't, not the slightest bit interested. And then when gamers started doing well in races, suddenly the motor industry not only took notice, but took over. And then suddenly, as a games uh, website, or games journalist, we couldn't contact those people anymore. They were in the realm of motorsport. And this is the big problem I'm having at the moment with everything we see here. We have, as soon as somebody crosses into that sort of realm, suddenly the games industry is actually cut out, and that completely cuts it out. If you're not an F1 publication, uh, that deals with F1, you won't be allowed to cover eSport Gaming Championship. And that's the way things have been this year. So in, from a from a from uh, an outward sense, I think F1 eSports has had great exposure on TV, though the commentary did my head in. That's a different thing entirely. Um, we have David Valsecchi. There's only so much you can take. eSports and WRC, I think there was certainly a bit of friction in the commentary there. The, um, the MotoGP is largely a European championship. But where McLaren are different to all these other companies is they're the first automotive company, first car company, to actually really invest in esports in this way. We've seen Renault come into it this week. Uh, we've seen the uh, Fernando Alonso's team come into it, even though esports is a bit unstructured. But McLaren were the first to really take a step. But not only take a step, they they brought gamers in on a more serious level and they trained them up physically they trained them up in say cockpit cam only they trained them up evenly this is something which i haven't seen in the esports of the other titles for example f1 esports you can race the game from any viewpoint in the final which i find completely unacceptable it's the same with a rally game how can you have two people competing on the same game playing from different viewpoints you're either in the car or out of the car. It's just a rule. Um, otherwise, you know, people are always just going to opt to use the optimum viewpoint that they can. You know, why don't we just fly over the car and drive it? Because we can. It's fine for the general public playing a game. It's not fine for a sportsman who's controlled within the rules of a competition. Also down to the media, I think that where McLaren's world's fastest gamer have employed a director of esports, who comes from the games industry, who understands video games. This isn't happening so far with the other the other outlets. They're all very much within their automotive sectors that have created game sections. So it's been great for the world of esports this year, but my award this year will go to McLaren. They've, they've 
gone into directions that other people haven't done before. They've they've shown opportunities that I think they've demonstrated now, which is why other more and more sort of brands and companies are going to be getting involved. And I think they've taken a lead. And recently, though it wasn't in 2017, seeing Rudy Van Buren, winner of the uh, world's fastest game of competition, racing in the race of champions and beating champions. Wow, there is a gamer. Now, he had some real-life karting experience, as did Jan Mardenborough. And as I suggest to people who compete in stuff like GT Academy, jump in a go-kart, get down the gym, get yourself in shape, optimize yourself in every single way you can, physically better, mentally better. And that was demonstrated with McLaren's World's Fastest Game. They've discovered a talent in Rudy Van Buren, both for their simulator and real driving as well. And it really is fantastic to see. So I think this year, this uh, World, McLaren's World's Fastest Gamer has been the standout for me. I think the other three championships are going to, no doubt, make a lot of improvements this year as to where they are, how it fits in with their brand and how they can develop in the years to come. And certainly eSport is here to stay, at least for the moment. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how they find their feet. Chaps, I'm just going to, uh, I've been taking over this award quite a bit. As you know, I've been more sort of involved in it than you guys. But what's been your initial reflection on the uh, on this area? Yeah, what I like about the McLaren World's Fastest Game is they didn't sort of stick to one title. They covered numerous titles, uh, you know, across several different platforms, including mobile, which was quite a surprise. So it was good that they had sort of a more inclusive uh, community around them rather than sort of sticking to one game that we've seen with the other titles absolutely i mean it's um they, they you know they they did something that early in the year it didn't all come together but they really did bring it together later in the year they brought together some of the best races in the world but they did it in a sort of transparent way that brought together both gaming and automotive media and they were very helpful with access in that sense whereas the other chan the other uh, competitions didn't and one sort of feels that they sort of, you know, it's funny, but gamers cared a lot about GT Academy years ago, but then they lost interest because it, as it became motor racing and it separated itself from gaming, gamers just completely lost interest in GT Academy in the end. And that's what's going to happen more with these esports if they don't make it available and approachable to the games industry. It's very important that the games industry is involved. Uh, and that's going to be something that hopefully we'll see more of in the coming months and years. And maybe they'll even listen to this podcast and learn a thing or two. Uh, yeah, I mean, from what you guys have said, I pretty much agree. Um, I can't say too much, to be honest, because I haven't followed them at length. But um, from what we said, Alan, I think McLaren probably deserves the award and deserves recognition for really going that extra mile. Um, I think it's great to see more uh, real-world uh, motorsport championships actually get involved with it as well. Um, you know, it helps gamers get more uh, feel more connected to their favourite motorsports, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I think really it's it's probably it's still in its infancy at the moment. So I think time will tell um, how it develops. So um, we'll wait and see. I like the sort of range that we're having so far. You know, with McLaren, you have uh, several different titles over several different sort of platforms. So you have this sort of all inclusive nature about it. And of course, you have other things like MotoGP. Uh, doing things differently and with the wrc sports you have rounds that actually coincide with the real world uh rallies so it's it's nice to see a mix which you know each uh event is actually bringing something different to the table and each has its own sort of uniqueness to it so it's good to see that and of course we have other guys jumping on board with codemasters going to be doing some dirt uh stuff as well so it's it's, it's a growing market isn't it and we've only just sort of seeing the sort of really early days for it becoming mainstream i guess in the racing genre so it's, it's one of these things we need to keep an eye on i'm certainly are certainly i'm excited uh, for the future just to see all these different platforms and ways they approach the esports thanks for your input chaps uh, and i've taken over a lot of this one because obviously i've done a lot of work on it this year but uh, and i've been involved in this for a long time but uh, it's good to see mclaren getting involved it's good to see renault getting involved this year it'd be interesting to see what people like fernando alonso do with their team is it just a branding exercise or is it something that's actually going to go somewhere we'll wait and see but that's it for this award viewers and there'll be more from us very soon the team vvv awards 2018 sponsored by ben green racing and thrustmaster